All right, hello YouTube. Today we spent a few hours testing Heal Scourge and we did it with the new sword to boot. We have uh, been trying this out. We've been trying all the different supports out and today was Heal Alacrity Scourge. Uh, for those that don't know how it works, I will do a quick demonstration, then talk about the gameplay and then my thoughts on it. So this is a golem and this is an extreme damage field. This is the highest damage damage field. And we are going to just jump on in there with a sword. We're gonna throw down a shade. We're gonna throw down a second shade because we've got time. We're gonna put up some barriers. We're gonna use transfusion. We're gonna use desiccate. That's gonna give us some boons. We're going to use torch four and five. We're gonna throw down some more Ooga Booga skills. We're gonna hit the sword two off cooldown just in order to keep the uh, the death juice up and do this and this and we we haven't even used our heal skill yet uh you get the idea you get the idea um yeah there we go there's the boons and our health is fine and we got barrier and everyone's safe and it's it's wonderful okay let's talk about how this works heal scourge is very very straightforward and simple to play but it does have a lot of keys it i didn't even have to weapon swap. i didn't weapon swap all day today it wasn't necessary it wasn't unnecessary, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why. So first off, Heal Scourge used to use either Dagger Torch or maybe Pistol Torch or Scepter Torch. They have a lot of freedom on their main hand. They have a lot of freedom in their main hand. And the reason is that really none of them help with supports. They can do whatever they want. Dagger generates life force on the auto attack chain. The sword generates life force on the two skill. The pistol goes bang bang, and the scepter is another option. Many of those, the three skill, will corrupt boons. In the case of the sword, the three skill was also a lot of movement. So I actually like the sword after trying it because not only does it give you life force, in the case of the sword, you just hit the two every time it lights up for Ravenous Wave. Every time it lights up, you hit the button and you are generating 12% of your life force every six seconds, which was more than enough to spam every single ability up here every time it came off cooldown. It was more than enough. So I was just spamming two off cooldown for life force, three whenever I needed to move, and then you also had a ranged auto attack. There's stupid range. Also on Asuras, it appears above you because they didn't actually center it for each race. They just put it in the middle of the hitboxes or something. I don't know. Torch is our preferred offhand because the five can help with might. You could use Warhorn, but the, the, the torch helps with might uptime. Over here on the side, you do not have a lot of flexibility with your utilities. You have a little. I would say Serpent Siphon feels required. Now, you're going to do one of two things. You are either going to use Well of Blood off cooldown, and that will keep up regen on your party. And also, if you happen to be using Relic of Phoebe, it'll keep swiftness on your party. If you do that, you can save Serpent Siphon for when you need to give the group Aegis, if the fight is one where Aegis is good. Option number two, you can use Serpent Siphon when it comes, uh, just every time it comes off cooldown. And if you have Alacrity, Serpent Siphon alone is going to be basically 100% uptime on regeneration for your party and occasional barriers. You do that, you can save the Well of Blood for when you need it. Well of Blood combined with Blood Magic is a small AoE revive. So if you, for example, have some people go down state, you can pull them all in with uh, Transfusion or your F4, and then you could throw Well of Blood on them and it will start reviving all of them while you then manually revive them. So you can kind of pick, do I want to spam Serpent and save Well for emergencies or spam Well and save Serpent for Aegis? That's kind of how it felt to me. You can, of course, also do uh, some Staff 2 nonsense with Mark of Blood to get more regen on the party. However, uh, there's a, there's also uh, a trait that when you dodge, you can generate a mark as well. I don't like relying on those because there are some bosses that with weird hitboxes that just, I have trouble getting them to trigger marks. Like I throw the marks down and they stay like this. They just, they won't detonate. So I found that either just spamming well and saving Serpent for when I need Aegis or spamming Serpent and saving well for when I need AoE res worked perfectly fine for me. So that was the gameplay route I went with. And then I just never even had to weapon swap. I didn't need to do it. Next skill, because I'm very pug life, Signet of Undeath is a long range revive. Very useful for, you know, it's 900 range revive. And when it is not on, uh, you know, cooling down, it also generates your life force every couple of seconds. Now you can operate just fine without that, but it's it's a battery that makes it even easier and it makes your mistakes even more forgiven. Like if you forget to press sword two for a while, it's still topping you off. And then of course we got Flesh Golem in the last slot and you know, having the Flesh Golem do a charge is a pretty nice CC which I believe is actually a nicer CC, the larger the enemy's hitbox is. Uh, because uh, as it charges through an enemy, it will do uh, CC as it passes through them, 
similar to the way Rev Staff 5 works. And just a moment, we're going to just add an average defiance bar here just to show. And that's an average golem, average defiance. And we're just going to throw the golem in and boom. So that's quite a bit of CC. Like I would say, well, ignoring that cripple that's pulsing from the uh, auto, uh, maybe like four or 500 there. Uh, I just tried to use the ranger buttons to pull my pet back. That does not work. I cannot do that with him. Anywho, uh, let me go over to the console and despawn the golem just so I leave combat. All right, this is the build I used. I think this is pretty standard. I don't think there's anything wild or crazy about this, but this is what I was running today. It felt really good. I could talk about each of the traits, but I think that's going a, a bit too much into it. I could have swapped soul mark. Honestly, nothing in this column here really helped me that much for how I was playing it, but that's what I had. And yeah, what else can we, can we say about it? I was running full harriers. You could run givers or minstrels, but I had so much life. Necromancer, by default, is one of the classes that has the highest base health and I had so much life uh even on bone skinner where we're just constantly getting slapped by a massive damage aura felt fine it honestly felt fine like I, I just went in here just a second this is an extreme damage aura and I went in there and I was just like you know barriering and healing through it and I wasn't even using the heal skill so it, it felt completely fine as mentioned earlier I was using relic of Phoebe just because it uh gave us the ability to give our group swiftness I was running full harriers on the gear concentration and transference on the sigils and runes the monk there's a lot of different relics you could use you could use Phoebe you could use mercy you could use monk probably use water there's there's quite a few relics uh relic options you could use there like I said very little flexibility here it felt like uh, but a lot of flexibility in the equipment oh i don't think i talked about desiccate desiccate is mainly there to give fury and to help with might up time but if you're on a fight where you really need to take spectral grasp or you know summon flesh worm for whisper of Jormag or something like that i would say desiccate or the signet of undeath would be the first things you would swap out you would keep the serpent siphon either for the regen or for the ages okay weaknesses so far, I've been like, man, here's this amazing healer. Though a new weapon is uh, maybe a slight upgrade because it just gives you a movement ability. It probably generates about the same life force as the dagger as long as you're hitting that two off of cooldown. Um, does it help a lot with support? No, but the mobility is nice. You know, every time a boss has a mechanic where you have to like run away and do something and then run back, I could just zoom back and it felt really good. It felt really good to have that option available to me. However, without Relic of Phoebe, we do not have good party swiftness. I don't think we do. Uh, War there's Warhorn 5. Uh, you know, now, hold on. As soon as I say that, I'm wondering. It says gain swiftness. I think the swiftness from this is self only. I'm pretty sure. Hang on a second. Noxy cut this part out. You did not give it to the Flesh Golem. I think it's self only swiftness. Okay. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, it's difficult to get party swiftness from a Scourge. Additionally, no stability. Now, some people be like, oh, but what about the little poo-poo trail? Well, the little poo-poo trail, for those who don't play Scourge, is this. You hit this button, and then you have to basically draw on your party. You have to freaking etch-a-sketch them, and if you don't, they, like, it's not feasible. Okay. Uh, the only time I really see this as a good way of getting stability on uh, your group is if you're in like World v. World and you're running and they're all behind you and then they're all running through it, which is lovely. They can all run through that. And as long as they hit the sand at some point, they get a stability. But in real practical scenarios, there is no time to activate that and through the through the group. It, as far as I'm concerned, this group does not, th this class does not have a real group-wide stability on demand. You know, the Tempest, the Chrono, the Druid, they could all just tap a key and instantly it just pulsed out. It wasn't a huge pulse. For some of them, it was like 300 range. For some, it was 600, but it just pulsed out. Even the Warrior Banner had like a three quarters of a second cast time, but again, slam down and everyone got it. They they don't have to like run around like the dotted line on the freaking family circus Sunday newspaper and hit every single party member with the sand in order to do it. So not, I would say that's the weakest thing about this build. You have got some of the best res potential in the game on this. You've got incredible barriers. Uh, by the way, a tip from Noxy, I'll pass on to you. Your barriers will hit three people. If you have two shades down, that's three, three, and three. You'll hit nine. So if you have two shades down and you use your huge barrier skill, which is your uh, F3, it will hit nine of the 10 people in your striker raid group. Very nice. You know, so as long as you got one shade down, you're hitting your whole party. Three and three, you're hitting six people. But if you have got two shades down, or you know, you can keep three shades down for like a second or two, but then they will start wearing off. And you can't, you can't sustain that. But you can have two shades out every time you slam all your shroud skills 
and then just make sure to summon two more before you slam them all again. Uh, does this mean it gives alacrity to nine people? I'm pretty sure the alack, it says number of targets five. The alack uh, caps at five. Uh, so that, you know, you, you're not gonna provide alack to more people than just your group. But you've got very large barrier. If you do just a second or two of planning ahead, you can apply it to more than just your own group. Ever since the rework to, to Necro last year, you've got very large healing. It used to be Necro was good barrier, good revive, but bad healing, bad boons. Now it's good barrier, good healing, good revive, not as good as it used to be, but still better than most classes. Good boons also, the main one, they don't have a stability. And you can, you know, there are many things in the game that can be negated with a really clutch Aegis. You have access to a single Aegis with Serpent Siphon that I know of. Tell me if I'm wrong, but yeah, you've got access to one of Aegis. That's the weak point. If you can uh, find a partner, like a, a team member, that is a quickness providing DPS that provides the group stability on demand, such as a herald, a quick herald, not a not a heal herald. They you're you're golden. Okay, you'll have everything covered. But yeah, I do I do know a little bit more on this one, so I had a little bit more to say about it. Uh, a couple of things, what do I not like about it? You got no stability, no swiftness on demand, except for the relic. And again, I'm not saying that they need to change those things. I'm just informing you. That's all. You know, every class has stuff they're good and they're bad at. This class has a lot it's good at and not much it's bad at. So those things. Uh, one thing I don't like, similar to the untamed crap visibility, is this. This yellow thing. I have seen this fool me and my teammates. If you're on a fight and you do this, so many people, including me sometimes, run out of it. I hate this. This this that graphic, awful stuff. I just tried to dodge my own yellow circle. I'm definitely getting back into uh, necro gaming. That graphic on this character, that graphic on Spectre, the snot on the Untamed. If it makes your teammates run away or stand in red stuff, it's bad. That's bad. I don't like that animation. That's no good. Get that out of here. What else? This is a very minor thing. But sometimes if you get hit by a mechanic, it despawns your flesh golem. And when that happens, so for example, uh, today I was fighting, I think it was Franier. I got clipped by one of the red circles. It froze me for a second. I broke out of it a moment later and my golem was dead and it was on a full 40 second cooldown. That is that is an issue that has been in the game forever. Would love to see it fixed. That that really should not happen. Like if your stuff just gets despawned because of um, a, a mechanic, I wish it just, if it has to get despawned, don't put it on cooldown. Don't put it on the full cooldown. That's awful. That's awful stuff. I dodge out of my own sand shades. That's actually gaming. Yeah, that's challenge mode, challenge mode. Is fighting CMs while dodging your shades. Yeah, and this class, great healing, great barrier, great boons, great revives. No swiftness unless Relic of Phoebe. No stability. Those are the weaknesses. The weird visuals with the sand shades. Sometimes some gimmicky stuff with the golem, but it's not a huge deal. Very easy to learn, but it does have a lot of button mashing. Like, I didn't even have to weapon swap. You can if you want to. It feels like your utility is extremely strict. You got a lot of freedom in weapons, not a lot of freedom in utility. You're, you're very limited in what you can do over here without like breaking stuff. Like if I just take Desiccate off the bar, I got to get someone else to provide fury. That's the... Uh, that's where I'm getting it. Serpent Siphon, if I take it off the bar, I have to use Well of Blood and Marks to keep the regen up. And Signal of Undeath can be taken off the bar, but it's really nice having it. It's really nice having an additional way of saving someone's life if you're in pugs. If you're in a very organized group and you don't need it much, you could absolutely remove that. But yeah, with that, uh, I think that's everything I got to say about this. The new sword on it is a very small upgrade. The, uh, the Sword 3 is just mobility where you didn't have it before. And it's easily able to put out enough life force that you can spam every single thing off cooldown. And that's it. If you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, or ways that you think that this could have been done better, put it in the comments down below. I'll fight you there. Peace.